Hi, it's Juliet from My City Plants. Today I will share with you my list of 10 easy to care for plants that I recommend to people who are just starting on their green journey or have a hard time being successful in their plant relationships. I will not just share names of these 10 easy plants for you. I will provide a basic information for each plant type its care requirements, will explain to you what to accept and look out for, how to choose the right plan, and decide on the right amount of plants. If you are new here, I am the founder of My City Plants. We are a New York-based plant company well known for greening up homes and offices with plants that can easily adapt to our busy lifestyle and city environment. I personally provide customer service to thousands of our customers, solve all kinds of plant issues, address concerns, struggles, challenges, and find solutions. On this channel, I'm sharing with you my experience, expertise, tricks, and tips. My goal is to provide you with the knowledge and tools you need to grow happy and healthy plants. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel today so you do not miss any of my new videos about plant care, plant issues, self-watering planters, plant decor, and much more. If you are looking to get your first plant, you're probably worried and afraid you might kill it because you have never had to take care of plants before. If you tried a few times but never really succeeded, you might be picking up plants that have a temperamental character too sensitive or not very forgiving when we mistreat him or make a mistake. By the end of this video, you will have a multiple choice of plants that will bring more success to your life with plants experience and will help you to learn the plant language better. Before I get to the list of 10 easy plants, it's important to understand that everything we do takes time. There is only so many hours a day and six to eight of them should be dedicated to a good night's sleep. So I strongly recommend starting small. Do not get lots of plants at once. Taking care, properly taking care of many plants is very time consuming, it can be overwhelming. Often we lose plants simply because we do not have enough time to examine them, provide regular cleaning, trimming, analyze why our plants are not thriving, treat health issues, etc. As a result, we catch issues too late and then we feel bad about it, we call ourselves plant killers or believe we have a black thumb. This can be avoided if we take on tasks we know we have enough time to do right. There are four things I want you to think about before you start your green journey or add another plant to your collection. First is your lifestyle. Do you work five days a week and go in weekends? Do you travel a lot in general? Do you participate in a lot of activities with your kids, family, friends, or your pets? How much time do you spend on other things like cooking, shopping, workouts? How much time you think you can dedicate to your house plants? This will help you to bring the right amount of plants into your life, the amount of plants you can properly care for and get the best results. The second is light. What is the light situation in your space? Do you have low light, no sun in your space at all? Do you have medium light, like filtered or indirect sunlight? Do you have bright light and you have a sun all day in your room? The light exposure determines what type of plants can grow in your space. Most plants do not like long, direct sun exposure. They do best in a medium light environment. In the video description, you will find the link to our light guides that will help you to assess the light situation in your space better. The third thing I want you to think about is space. Do you have space for a plant you're thinking of bringing home? Remember, plants grow and they need plenty of room around them so they can spread their leaves and get a good air circulation all around. Some plants are tall and slim, some plants are round and wide, others are hanging or climbing plants. So thinking about your space will help you to select a plant with the best shape and growing habits for an area where you want to add some life. Last but not least thing I want you to think about is pot selection. 
Believe it or not, many problems happen when plants are potted in pots without drainage, when they are kept in the nursery pots for too long, when they just dropped in an akasha pot and sitting in water that is collecting at the bottom. So choose your pot wisely if you really want your plants to thrive. Now let's talk plants. Plants that I am recommending today are very common plants and they can be found almost anywhere. What makes a plant an easy plant? Easy are plants with low watering frequency requirements. Plants that are easier to understand when they're ready for a drink. Easy are plants that can adapt to a variety of light environment. Easy are plants that are easy to keep in shape by simple pruning. Easy are plants that are very forgiving when we mess up or neglect them for a while. Easy are plants that are not as susceptible to pests, but all plants are attractive to pests. I have made a few videos about different common plant pest issues and how to treat them. Those videos can be found in our house plant pest playlist on our channel. I will talk about each plant separately and address the following for each plant. Watering frequency, light requirements, misting requirements, possible pest issues, cleaning requirements, trimming or pruning requirements. I might repeat myself over and over again as some of the same applies to more than one plant, but this way you'll have a better understanding and know what to expect when bringing one of these plants home. So here we go, snake plant. This plant is on the top easy plant list of every plant expert. This plant is a slow drinker. It's considered to be one of the lowest watering frequency plant. Overwatering is a number one issue with this plant. It comes from the succulent family and it likes its soil to be completely bone dry all the way through before getting a drink. Snake plant can easily adapt to any light environment, low, medium, or bright. It can handle some direct sunlight. Misting, something you don't need to worry about with this guy. No misting is necessary. Pests, not very desirable for pests, but might attract mealybugs and spider mites. Keeping up with the cleaning routine for this guy is very easy. You simply need to use moist paper towel once every two weeks and wipe leaves top and under to keep this guy clean since the leaves are really sturdy and wide it will not take much time just top and under since it is a very slow growing plant pruning is not something you need to worry about Jade plant is very hardy and resilient plant. It will always come back to life if we mess it up as long as the roots are healthy. Feng Shui practitioners recommend jade plant as a good energy plant. It is considered a good luck symbol that attracts financial luck. Watering, just like for the snake plant, it is a very, very low frequency plant. It likes its soil to be completely dry before getting a drink. So be careful not to overwater the plant. Jade plant likes medium to bright light. It can handle some sunlight. Misting is not something you need to worry about with this plant too. Low past issue plant, but may attract mealybugs. Cleaning can be a little time consuming as the plant has a lot of small leaves. But if you do it regularly, once every seven to 10 days, you can speed up the process by using the Swiffer. Swiffer is very soft and gentle and is a great tool to remove dust from leaves. This is also a slow growing plant, so pruning is not something you need to worry about. If the plant grows too wide or too tall, the stems can be simply cut back to the desired width or height. Ponytail palm, one of my favorite plants. 
Even though it's called palm, this plant comes from a succulent family. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. So just like for previous plants in our list, it's a very low watering frequency plant. The soil needs to be completely dry all the way through before plant gets watered. It can thrive in low, medium or bright light can handle some direct sunlight. Misting is not necessary for this plant. It is also a low pest issue plant, but can attract mealybugs, scale or spider mites. Yes, cleaning can be time consuming because the plant has a lot of long and beautiful leaves. If done frequently, you can use Swiffer to remove the dust to cut down the time. And again, you just slip, simply swipe them off. It's a very gentle tool. It's not going to harm the plant. You can also use a spray bottle to use the water pressure to wash the leaves better. You can see it's very easy. And the water will slide off the leaves and get rid of all the dust. The plant definitely needs some trimming as it is known for getting its tips dry most of the time in the low humidity environment. It's very easy, you just need to cut the tips, make sure you keep the sharp angle so we'll keep the leaf shape intact. Let me see if I can find another one for you. Yeah, I just saw another one. Oh, here it is. Yeah, you see? Just on the angle. If you do the trimming regularly, it's not going to take much time because not all the leaves get brown tips at once. If you do it once every two, three weeks, it will not take much time. But if you wait too long and you have to trim 20 leaves instead of three, four leaves, of course, it will be more time consuming. It's a slow growing plant, so pruning is not something you need to worry about. I have a ponytail palm at home for many years. It did grow its leaves really long in all those years, and I just used a plant stand to elevate the plant from the floor so it's not touching the floor. ZZ plant. People adore this plant for its shiny leaves. This plant is also low watering frequency plant and likes its soil to be very dry before getting a drink, but not bone dry like snake plant, jade plant, or ponytail palm. It can adapt to low, medium, or bright light. It also can handle some direct sunlight. Misting is not really required for this plant. It is low pest issue plant, but can attract mealybugs, scale, and spider mites. Cleaning can be a little time consuming as plant has a lot of leaves. Unfortunately, Swiffer doesn't really work well on this uh, textured leaves. So you would have to use a moist paper towel and just wipe leaves. It's very easy. You can do a few leaves at the same time. You don't have to do each leaf individually. You just support the leaf with your palm underneath and you wipe the top of the leaves and then you can do the same thing for other side of the leaf. Even though it is a slow growing plant, there is some pruning involved with this guy. When the stems grow too wide or too tall, they need to be pruned back and you would have to cut them not halfway to the desired uh, width or height, but actually all the way down to the soil level. Keep in mind, guys, that cutting stems stimulates new growth, so it's all good. You're not harming plants or anything. It's actually good for your plants, so the little leaves can grow faster and stronger. One thing to keep in mind, that the root bulb of this plant grows as fast as its stems do. And once you see that the root bulb is pushing on the planter edges, that's the time to repot your plant into a larger planter.
Aglaonema plant has a very beautiful round shape and is very popular for dressing up some wider spaces. As you can see, I have different varieties of aglaonemas. This is a silver aglaonema, this is cutlass aglaonema, and I have a red aglaonema in the back. As you can see, they all have this kind of round uh, shape. The watering uh, frequency for this plant is also considered to be low, not as low as snake or zizi plant. Aglaonema plants like to be watered when the soil is half is dry halfway through, not like zizi or snake plant, again, all the way through, just a halfway through. It can adapt to low, medium, or bright light as long as you keep it away from the direct sunlight. It would like some misting, light misting just around the plant, like misting the air around it. You don't have to really mist its leaves. Very important to keep misting plant when you use the heat, when it's cold outside and you're warming up your apartment using the heat. That's when it'd be very beneficial to mist and air around your plant at least once a day. Cleaning, it's easy. Uh, the plants have a wide surface leaf, so all you have to do, again, it's better if you do it more often, so then it takes much less time. But again, you just simply wipe with a moist paper towel, you wipe the top and bottom of each leaf. And uh, I recommend doing it once every two or three weeks. Since the plant grows wide, well, it can also grow tall, of course, but there is some pruning involved and it's a very easy plant to prune. Whichever leaves are out of shape or if the plant is too big for the space where it is, you can always, always just cut back those leaves or even come back the whole stem to keep it in the desired shape and height. Porthos plant is loved by many for its cascading habits, including me. It is also a low watering frequency plant and just like Aglaonema, it likes to be watered when the soil is dry halfway through. This plant is also very vocal when it's thirsty, so you'll know exactly when it wants to have a drink. All leaves are gonna get really, really droopy. Don't panic. It's just the perfect time to water this type of plant. Once you water it, in a short while, all the leaves will perk back up. This plant can adapt to low, medium or bright light. It prefers to stay away from the direct sun. Loves misting. You can mist lightly using the spray bottle air around the plant. You can also mist its leaves. But again, just very lightly. You can do this a few times a week. And as I mentioned earlier, daily misting is recommended when the heating is in use. Very desirable plant for mealybugs. That's why it's very important to check on your plant often. Check the top and under the leaves to see if you see any sign of the pest infestation. If the issue caught early, it can be easily fixed. Cleaning routine can be time consuming. As you can see, plant has a lot of leaves and if it's a mature plant, like the one I have here, it also has long leaves with a lot of leaves on it. But don't panic. If you do it often, it doesn't take as much time. For light dusting, again, you can use Swiffer, but I do still recommend cleaning leaves with the moist paper towel at least once every three, four weeks. You can also as I mentioned earlier, use the spray bottle and just get rid of the dust with the water pressure. This plant grows faster than any previous plants I have spoken to you about today and will require some pruning. There is two reasons why you want to prune this plant. One reason, if the legs of the plant are getting way too long and get touching the floor, get on the way of moving around the plant. The other reason I strongly recommend pruning plaques, not all of them, just some of the legs. So this way you can keep the shape of the plant round and full on top. Every time you prune the legs back, it forces the plant to grow more leaves on top. Philodendron. 
another beautiful cascading plant. This plant likes its soil to be almost dry all the way through before it's getting a drink. It is not as vocal as a Porthos plant, but when it's dehydrated, it will droop its leaves and then that's a perfect time for you to run and get that watering can. This type of plant prefers medium to bright light as long as you keep it away from the direct sunlight rays. It can handle the low light, but then it would grow very spindly as like you can see. This is the plant that's living in a very low light in our studio. You see how many gaps you get and the leaves are getting really, really small. Philodendron likes some misting. You can lightly mist an air around this plant few times a week and daily when the indoor heating is in use. There are not many pest issues with the plant. The most common pest issues are mealybugs and spider mites. Proper cleaning will take some time. Of course, you can use a Swiffer for regular light dusting. You can also use spray bottle and use the water pressure to wash the leaves. But I think it is best once in a while to wipe the leaves top and under with a moist paper towel. This plant is a moderate speed growing plant, not as fast as Porthos, but it also grows its legs with a rapid speed. Just like any cascading plant, this guy will require some pruning. When the legs grow too long, they can be simply cut back to the desired length. I also recommend cutting few legs once in a while to help the plant to keep its full shape on top. Dracaena lisa. This is a tall plant. I have used this plant for a lot of office plant decor because most of the offices do not have a lot of bright light and very often the fluorescent light is the only option. Plant can adapt to low, medium or bright light but it prefers to stay away from the direct sunlight. This plant prefers its soil to be mostly dry before watering. Misting is something this plant would like. You can mist the air around the plant a few times a week and daily when the heating is in use. Plant is very resistant to pests but may attract mealybugs or spider mites. Cleaning takes time because there is a lot of leaves on this plant. You can use the Swiffer for regular light dusting but this plant will require a deeper cleaning. Then you would need to use the paper towel with water so you mist it, make it moist and then you wipe leaves top and under and I would recommend doing this at least once a month. This plant will require regular trimming as it is known for turning its tips brown due to low humidity. You can simply use sharp scissors and just trim the dry tips off. Dracaena lisa is a slow growing plant, but if it gets too tall for a space where it is in, the crown of the plant can be trimmed back to the desired height. Last two plants on my list not considered to be low watering frequency plants, but they are very hardy, very forgiving, plus it's very easy to understand when these plants would like to be watered. Bromeliads. I personally love these plants. Even though they bloom just once in their lifetime, their foliage is still very attractive. They come in completely different varieties of leaf color and leaf shape. Some of them have a long, big, dark green leaves. Some of them have small leaves, just like the variety I have here. You can see how beautiful those stripes on the leaves and that's what makes it so attractive. This plant is a drinker, a butt but it can handle some long dry periods as well. It is best to water this plant when the top two, three inches of soil is dry. This plant will be happy growing in a bright or medium light and will appreciate some sun rays. Bromeliads love misting. You can mist the air around the plant and its leaves 
daily if you want to, but at least a few times a week. Sometimes the tips of bromeliads, they will turn brown due to low humidity. It's very easy to trim it. It doesn't happen often, it doesn't happen to all the leaves at once. If your plant has a little bit of dry tip, you can just simply trim it. And again, remember guys to keep the tip of the leaf in place to follow the natural leaf shape. This is not a fast growing plant, but if it gets too wide, it can easily be pruned back to the desired shape. Stockhorn fern, another one of my favorite plants. This is a very unique looking guy, not your usual house plant. The plant I have here is growing on a wooden board and it roots are covered with sphagnum moth. This guy is a heavy drinker and will require most likely weekly watering, but it's very easy to tell when the plant is ready for a drink. All you have to do is just touch the sphagnum moss and if it feels very very like completely dry that's the best time to water this plant i personally water this plant in a shower i would bring it into the bathtub and let the light shower run over it for about five minutes then let it drain for about 30 minutes before hanging it back up on the wall the other way to water this plant is in the sink or you can also use a spray bottle and heavily saturate the, the sphagnum was with water using the spray bottle. It grows happiest in medium to bright light, but keep this plant away from the direct sunlight. You like some misting, but it's not required. You can mist some air around it once in a while, but if you water this guy in the shower, there's definitely enough misting there. Pest issue is rarely a problem, but the fungus is. It is very important to make sure that the sphagnum moss is completely dry before you water this plant. Stockhorn fern is not a fast growing plant, but if it gets too wide for space where it's in, you can prune it back by simply cutting its widest leaves all the way back. This completes my list of 10 easy plants. I would love to know which plant you think is the easiest for you. Please let me know in the comments below. If you're curious to learn more about plant care for different plant types, check out my videos in our plant care playlist. Like this video if you did, subscribe to our channel so you do not miss any important information that will help you to keep your plants healthy and happy. I wish you lots of green luck. Thank you for watching and see you soon.